G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Meter here. This is the aftermath of Sipover's One Block Civilization event, where a hundred players split into four teams were pitted against each other in a brutal war of attrition. Well, that was the idea in theory. If this really was a war of attrition though, our team would have won easily. My inspiration going into the two week event was to build an impenetrable base. All of our planning and preparation was to develop the resources and infrastructure to make the ultimate doomsday bunker. I was on the green team. In the other quadrants we had red, purple, and the opposite to us was blue. We had a strong team, a couple of great PvPers, but we also had some of the best technical players. And together we achieved our goal of having the strongest defensible position possible which would have seen us through a brutal war of attrition. However, there was a variable that I didn't account for. Zipover didn't want a war of attrition. He wanted fast-paced combat and non-stop fighting, which is great if you're a PvP player. However, if you're a technical player, you need time to plan, organize, and build. But no matter how much time or effort we put into the preparation of our strategy, it meant nothing against the Mad God and his power to move the world border. As the playable area shrank, the final fight was crammed into a meat grinder where individual skill or equipment meant nothing. The only thing that prevailed was blue team and their overwhelming numerical advantage. So unfortunately we never got to witness the true potential of our base, but that leads us to the question. How do you make a base in Minecraft that is truly impenetrable? Well, this base is a good place to start. The basic principle of any base is that people you like can get inside. However, people that you don't like can't. Inside the base, there is space for you and your valuables. And the idea is to use any means necessary to keep what you don't want outside. However, Minecraft is a sandbox game. And in true anarchy, players can also use any means necessary to get inside your base. Let's lay down some ground rules. No exploitative mods, no plot protection, and only game mechanics accessible to the player in survival. However, any percent means any exploit in any version can be used to construct the base, as long as it's possible to do in survival. Then likewise, the player can use any amount of time, resources, or exploits accessible to them to try and break inside of the base. This is the quest for Minecraft's any percent impenetrable base, the ultimate anti-prison. Let's start with the base from the one block event. Here are all the materials you might expect an end game PvP player to have. We got ourselves our maxed out gear, a couple of tools, a couple of gapples, some building blocks and a whole bunch of totems. With Depth Strider, the water isn't too much trouble. However, even if I get all the way to the edge here, the bubble columns prevent me from getting anywhere near the base. We're going to need to try and bridge inside. However, if I try to do that, the moment that I go around this edge to try and place a block, the bubble columns immediately start pushing me upwards. Our only option is to go through the obsidian berm. Once we are through, we can start removing the soul sand like so, and carving a path towards the first wall. However, you can probably hear what our next challenge is going to be. Wardens are a great way to protect the perimeter of a base, because they can track the player at insane ranges, even through blocks, and their sonic blasts can hit players through blocks even if they don't have line of sight. And the way that this wall has been designed is to make sure that the wardens are at the perfect distance so that their sonic blast is in range of any position that you could possibly attack from. However, it's also out of range from any position inside of the base. So now we've hit a bit of a snag. If I try to get anywhere near this wall, the wardens will start tracking me. However, I need to break this obsidian to start bridging across. And now, once again, I'm stuck in a position where I can't bridge on the other side of this block. It seems our only real option is to go straight through the base of this wall. And it's starting to sound like things are getting spicy up there.
However, with enough perseverance, it's certainly possible to edge your way closer and closer. But now we're starting to true through totems. Oh, would you look at that? They actually killed me. Alright, here we go. Attempt number two. There we go, we're inside the base. As you can see, this is certainly not Minecraft's any percent impenetrable base. With enough grit and determination, you can get inside. However, the process is not easy, and it'll probably cost a few lives to get inside. Plus, if you add an active defense, then this base is basically impossible to assault without committing significant casualties. However, there is one glaring weakness. If I go ahead and equip an elytra like so, and a couple of rockets, if I start flying, I can fly all the way down through the central bubble column and get straight inside like that. So this is only really effective when elytra is not in play. This begs the question of what if you just make a massive obsidian cube and fill it with wardens? Here we have the optimal setup, a block that takes an extremely long time to break, along with wardens to blast at intruders, and in the very center, we even have elder guardians to apply mining fatigue. However, this defense is surprisingly weak, as I'll now demonstrate. It turns out that with the player in the crouched position like so, breaking blocks doesn't cause any vibrations detectable by the wardens, and so I can do this without even aggravating them. And just like that, we are already inside of the interior of the base. And it appears that the application of mining fatigue is very inconsistent and unreliable. And even if you get mining fatigue, it's quite simple to grab a milk bucket in order to completely remove the effect. That was way too easy to break into for the amount of effort you would need to actually build this base. In fact, this is where we encounter a significant issue with the entire concept of the impenetrable base. Pretty much any amount of blocks that take a finite amount of time to mine will always be possible to breach given enough time and patience. And the more blocks you add to your defense, the larger the surface area you need to cover for an active defense, and thus, the more places there are for your enemies to hide in and breach your defenses from. Imagine how impossible it would be to defend this entire volume when players can essentially create their own tunnels anywhere. And just like that, your defenses are breached. Clearly, if we are to truly make Minecraft any percent impenetrable base, we're going to need to start thinking outside the box. Because this box just ain't cutting it. To achieve this, we're going to need to throw all practicality straight out the window. If you are planning to build the ultimate base on your favourite survival multiplayer, well, that's just not going to happen. Multiplayer servers will always favour freedom of the player to break into a base over the freedom of the player to use exploits to make regions of the world impossible to access. I have first hand experience with this, when I made overpowered defences for bases in a heavily modded faction server. If admins deemed a base to be too powerful, they would simply weld edit it out of existence. This is simply the order of things when it comes to player versus player. It's time to pull out all the stops, any exploit, any version, whatever it takes to make this base impossible to get into. Our journey brings us here to the Wavetech Patreon server. Not a lot is happening here nowadays, however if you walk around you start to notice something a bit suspicious. Back in the day, this server was a testbed for the members of the Wavetech server to try out one of Minecraft's most insane exploits. An exploit which allowed you to obtain all sorts of illegal items, such as bedrock, command blocks, and barriers. All in vanilla survival. You can learn all about this exploit on channels such as JKM, as well as Trolley who recorded the whole process on the Patreon server. 
However, this exploit was only available to do back in 1.12, which explains why we need to remove the constraint of the design being practical. Because going forward, we're going to need an unbreakable block such as bedrock to make Minecraft any percent impenetrable base. And with this, we can at least justify this being accessible to the player in vanilla survival. That makes things easy, doesn't it? Just make a big bedrock cube. And at some point, it becomes impossible to break into, right? Well, not quite. In my inventory, I have this handy item known as cause fruit. And if I go ahead and use this, would you look at that? I'm immediately inside. However, a simple way to combat this is to fill your base with water. Because that way, no matter how many times you teleport, it will never teleport you into the water. But even with chorus fruit counted, there's still other teleporting methods to get inside, such as clipping into the wall using ender pearls like this. Yep, you can see I'm clipping into this wall. If I keep walking into it, and then I start sprinting, I can actually make it all the way inside. Alright, then we just make the walls bigger, right? Yep, that seems to do the trick against pearl clutching. However, this entire time, we've been skirting around the fact that bedrock is not as tough as it seems. This right here is a redstone clock designed by Karbsner, which has an insane property that can be used to make headless pistons. We can start by placing down a piston and switching on the machine. The piston will extend, and if we can make sure that we can instant mine the piston... There we go, we just made a downwards facing headless piston just like that. Now, all we need to do is switch off the clock. And would you look at that? The headless piston, when it retracted, spawned a piston head in the position of the bedrock, which deleted the bedrock. This is the basic principle of bedrock breaking, where all you need is a headless piston pointing into the bedrock, and when that piston retracts, it deletes the bedrock. And this contraption by Carbs is just one of many ways in which you can create headless pistons to break bedrock. But ultimately what this means is that even our bedrock bunker is not fully impenetrable. Unless we can do something about those pesky headless pistons. So what if we simply power the blocks in our wall? And now the piston is unable to retract and delete the bedrock. We scale this up so that we provide redstone power to every single block in the external shell. No matter where we place a piston, it will always be extending. And the roof can simply be protected by build limit. So this should be it, right? Well, no, unfortunately not. There is still an avenue for attack in the form of TNT. If I go ahead and place some TNT against the wall, like so, the ray cast from the explosion is able to leak through the corner of this wall and just like that, our defenses are broken. To prevent this, we'll need to fill in this corner with bedrock as well. However, there's no way to power these blocks from the interior, so we can just put our headless piston against it like so, break the bedrock, place down our TNT, and repeat the whole process over again. What we are going to need is some sort of blast resistant material on the interior of these corners. But we also still need to get redstone power into these blocks. So out of all the items in the game, which one has the property of being able to hard power a block with directionality while also being blast proof? And there turns out to be a specific block with a specific block state that can do this. A lightning rod that is stuck in the powered state will actually drive power into the block that it's facing into, like so. The lightning rod can also be waterlogged, which makes it blast proof. But how on earth do you obtain a lightning rod in the powered state? When being struck by lightning, the lightning rod will only remain in the powered state for a short amount of time before reverting back to the unpowered state. It turns out that in order to get our permanently powered lightning rod, we'll need to invoke another one of our exploits, update suppression. I'm not going to try and explain update suppression, especially for newer version, as Igna has recently done a lot of in-depth tutorials on how to do it in newer versions. Using the game rule update suppression simulator, 
we're going to go ahead and make ourselves something known as a class cast exception box, like so. As you can see, the shulker box will not open because it actually thinks that it's a lectern. So now, any block update sent to this comparator will result in update suppression. With our CCE suppressor active, I can go ahead and place down the lightning rod. We set the weather to thunder and then force lightning to hit our rod and activate it. It's going to instantly crash my game. However, when we rejoin, there we have it. An update suppressed powered lightning rod. They're clearly not the easiest block state to obtain, but it's possible to do in survival. But I have to say, if you can obtain a debug stick in survival, this would be a lot easier. But whatever, with enough grit and determination, you could eventually have your bedrock bunker with lightning rods powering every single block. While also being 100% blast proof. However, there's still another type of damage that we haven't accounted for. If I go ahead and build myself a wither right in the corner like so, You can probably hear that sound, and it's not very good. Yep, our weather has gone through and broken a whole bunch of the lightning rods. The corners are no longer being protected, and bish bash bosh, we're in. God damn it, is there any way to stop players from getting inside? Well, let me introduce you to the withering wall. What we have is a whole bunch of overlapping weather cages, with the withers constantly being hurt by TNT from these dupers. The result being a wall which destroys any attempt to break the bedrock. Yeah, nah, this is completely stupid. The problem is that in order to maintain adequate protection, you need to have a wither covering every block that you could try to tunnel into like so. However, the bottommost blocks are completely vulnerable as you can clearly see. And eventually we can actually start making the withers fall out the bottom. Not to mention the top of the wall doesn't properly line up with the build limit, meaning that the withers at the top are completely exposed. I mean, it's pretty intimidating, but it's also just outright silly. But what's this we have over here? Another bedrock box that is just asking to be broken into. Let's set up our piston to break the bedrock. And... <laughs> so, you remember when we were messing around with the lightning rod, and the lightning rod activating the update suppressor caused the game to crash? Well, this base uses our CCE boxes and a bunch of skulk sensors attached to redstone mechanisms to instantly crash the game the moment that it hears anything. Let's see how your enemies like it when even trying to place blocks will instantly crash the game. I'm even having trouble recording this. Alright, alright, that's enough. I'm activating the carpet rule to yeet the update suppression crash. Jesus Christ. With that enabled, we'll just get an angry message every time we crash the game. What I have done is made an intricate network of skulk sensors and wall dampening to provide exhaustive monitoring of the external bedrock shell. Whenever a vibration signal is detected, it gets quickly routed through the wiring and straight into the CC suppressor, which throws a class cast exception and crashes the game. This has to be one of the most surefired ways to make an impenetrable base because any attempt to try and break the bedrock is going to create so much noise that you're going to repeatedly crash the server. Every single block that you place, every single component that fires, every single futile attempt to get inside, and your game will crash and force you to start again. And thanks to all the dampening provided by the wall, the interior of the base is perfectly safe and isolated from the server crashing mayhem on the outside. We've also got ourselves a toggle, which disables the suppressors, as well as a bed for fast traveling and a way out of here. So that just leaves the question, have we obtained Minecraft's any percent impenetrable base? I still don't think we have. Even with the game crashing continuously through the entire bedrock breaking process, a player could just keep re-logging over and over and over again 
until eventually they have all the blocks in place to do the bedrock breaking. In fact, I think the only way to make a truly impenetrable base in Minecraft is to go with the Scorched Earth option and simply make a contraption that will chain crash the server whenever you're not online. I'm pretty sure the only surefired way to protect your base is to prevent people from playing the game entirely. Because after all, the core essence of what makes Minecraft such a great game is the fact that the player is offered so much freedom and flexibility that even the most indestructible block in the game cannot stand in your way. Well, I think that's enough of trying to break the game. For this video at least. Thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.